Everybody else can get that? Can we do one more? We most certainly will do one more. Let's do this to try and help out a little bit. So there is our section. And I want you to tell me what's in blue. Sarah, you got it whipped. Start call and work your way out. All right. So you think you got it, Sarah? What'd you end yep. up with? I right. have northwest quadrant of the southeast quadrant of the northwest quadrant of section 27. Very good. The northwest quadrant of the southeast quadrant of the northwest quadrant of and then all the rest right now is the same so what do you have the northwest quadrant of the southeast quadrant of the northwest of the Northwest Quadrant. Shauna, did you get that? Cool. And that is 10 acres. Now let me show you a math trick to help you out to determine the number of acres in this piece of property. Because this could be, hint, hint, a math question on the exam. So what we see are three fractions. In those three fractions, I'm going to ask you to remember back to second grade, the word denominator. I am the denominator. The denominator is the lower of the number. So what are the three denominators in this description? Four, four, and four. Four times four times four equals, I'll do the math for you, 64. And how many acres did I say was in a section? 640. So 64 goes into 640 10 times. Ta-da! That's how many acres are in that particular shaded in blue area. So if I told you that my uncle just bought a farm and he bought the north half of the northwest quadrant, you would be easily able to tell me how many acres are in that area. The denominator's two. That one's four. Two times four is 
eight. No, it's not. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Two times four is eight. Eight goes into 640, 80 times. Therefore, there are 80 acres in that legal description. That will save you a bunch of time. Now, you literally could go in and draw the north half of the Northwest Quadrant if you wanted to and count the acres and do all of that, but it's much easier to understand this mathematical equation where you simply use the denominators and divide it into the total area to get your acreage, right? Now, there's a symbol there called the north half. So let's go through another problem just so we can see it. If this is our section, and I tell you that I own that in green, now I want you to tell me what I own. And there are two acceptable answers to this. Two acceptable answers. You can quickly see that there are two of these areas covered in. So what I have is the northeast quadrant plus the northwest quadrant, right? Of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant. That is one way of looking at it. It's the northeast quadrant and the northwest quadrant of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant. But there is a second way that I can identify this grouping right here. What is one quarter plus one quarter? It's a half. The other way to see this is it's the north half of the northeast quadrant of the northeast quadrant. Both of those are acceptable to identify it. It's either the north half of the quadrant or it's the northwest quadrant and the northeast quadrant combined. Same thing, I could do this, I own this. That's the Northwest Quadrant and the Southwest Quadrant, or it's the West Half. Thumbs up. All right, be careful. There is some trickery that is played on the exam. This term right here, plus, they also love to use this symbol, a semicolon. A semicolon is used in the title world to mean and. So you could have the Northwest Quadrant and the Northwest Quadrant and literally what they're saying there is the Northwest Quadrant and the Northwest Quadrant. That makes no sense. And the Northeast Quadrant, <laughs> that's better. So it would be the Northwest Quadrant colon Northeast Quadrant. And they do this because in the old days of the typewriter, that is only one character. So they could crunch more in. 
And that was the reason behind it. Nothing other than that. They don't have to type the word plus or they don't have to type the word A-N-D with the space. They literally could put the Northwest Quadrant colon the Northeast Quadrant. So watch out for that symbol on your exam or on your questions because that is often used to identify the addition of two pieces or two parcels of property in, instead of just saying and. Do you think we've got this? Is there anything else that you have a question about? Now, what we have done so far is I've drawn the picture and you've told me the address. What I would like to know is if I gave you the address, could you find the picture? So let's go back to one that we've already used. And what I have got on this picture now is for colors. So my question to you is if I gave you this address, which color represents that address? All right. Well, in the real world, when we read addresses, if I told you I needed you to go to 12 Smith Street in Phoenix, Arizona, United States, and handed you a map, technically what you would do is look up United States first. Then you would look up Arizona. Then you would look up Phoenix. Then you would look up 12 Smith Street. So how do we actually read these instructions? We read them backwards. The same concept is true. Watch this. United States, Arizona, Phoenix, 12 Smith Street. So we actually have the same components in a legal description that we have in an address description to identify the property. So if you are given an address like there on the screen and I asked you which one of those colors represent that address, you merely would have to start at the end and work backwards to explain it. So you would start at, oh look, there I find Prince, uh, primary, uh, Prince of the principal reading number two. Well, let, let's play the game. Oh, there it is. So I found that one. Then I've got to find three ranges west, two tier south. Oh, there it is. Then it says section 27. Oh, so I've zoomed into that one. And then it's the northeast quadrant here, of the northeast quadrant there, of the northeast quadrant there. So the black colored in section represents that address. And I simply found that by starting at the end and working backwards, which is how we do street addresses too. So keep that in mind. If, for example, there was an exercise in knowledge at some later date that asked you to identify the parcel, if I gave you the address. All right, so that's pretty cool and it's pretty easy. Now, one other thing, if I'm standing in section one and I walk east, which section will I be in? If I'm in one and I walk east, I go to section six. Because remember, this township is repeated in every one of these. So what I'm telling you is, we blow that up really nice and big for us. If I'm right here and I walk east, 
I go into section six, but now I've moved to two ranges west because I've moved in closer. If I'm in section 36, which would be right there, and I walked south, I would be in section one, but now I'm in three tiers south because I moved into another frame of reference. This is the principle that you see when you go look at that McDonald's on Southport Road. Um, <clears throat> actually, it's Madison, and the address is 9000 South Madison. And then you go south across the street to that Speedway gas station, which is over there by the Greenwood Mall, if you know where I'm at. That address is like 900 North Madison. Well, how's that possible? Because they are different frames of reference. One is the south part of Marion County. And then here, this is the north part of Johnson County. We change the frame of reference. And we do that, same in here. I was in two tiers south. I walked further south. Now I'm in three tiers south. And that is how the same concept works with our houses we just have different frames of reference. Clear as mud, right? Are we okay? Sarah, thumbs up. Ross, cool. 